and grow YouTube show. Okay. If I was going to start some stuff, so you mentioned lettuces. What are mm -hmm. your other favorite fall crops to grow? Kale. I just love I just love kale so much, you know, um, because you can use it for so many things. Mm -hmm. And it just kale from the garden after frost is amazing. <laughs> it's just sweet <laughs> and it's just so good. And spinach is that way. And I love growing peas, but those they're not as frost tolerant. So you want to get those in the ground early enough, but peas in the fall are so sweet and delicious. And the hard part is even getting them inside because you're going to find yourself picking and eating yeah. in place. So many of those, uh, but Brussels sprouts and arugula and all the lettuces, the mm -hmm. kohlrabi, the cabbage. Um, are there root vegetables that do well in the fall? Beets or beets do great beets. And of okay. course, you know, the classic radish that grows in 30 days to 50 days, depending on which one you're growing. But one of my favorite of all time plants that uh, we were having this discussion yesterday uh, with Toby, my farm manager, and was like, what if you could only plant three things, what would they be? Mm, you know, okay. and in the winter time for me, beets would be one of the three things. Really? And so, yeah, beets. Uh, I love the earthiness of them. And even if you don't love the earthiness, they now have varieties of beets that have all the qualities of beets, but don't quite have that earthiness to it that mm -hmm. is off putting to some people. I happen to love it. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's some cool beet varieties out there right now, but root crops, they're just so, they're such a, they resonate fall and cool weather and, you know, nesting and a hundred percent. Yeah. But I do carrots this fall. Yeah. Oh yeah. I Start, just, yeah. You, yeah. I just got sent some carrot seeds. Maybe I'll try some carrots in one of my grow bags. Totally do that. Absolutely. And your grow bag is a great place to do it because you'll have good, clean soil that won't be have, yeah. have obstructions from stones or any, you know, bulky stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, that could even, you could leave those in the ground and harvest them from fall or late fall through next year. And yeah. they're biennial. So, you know, they're going to be around. And if you left them in the ground mm -hmm. in the second growing season, they'll put up their, their stocks for their seeds. Right there, which are so beautiful. It's like, mm -hmm. I want bouquets of them. So, yeah. okay. So speaking of overwintering, can you walk me through garlic? Because when I gardened with my friend Melody mm -hmm. two summers ago, she had already planted her garlic. So I got to harvest it with her. Our mutual friend Bree is mm -hmm. an epic garlic lover. She grows like thousands of garlic heads a year. Mm -hmm. So um, if I wanted to try garlic, this is when I should be planting it, right? You at Late fall, you know, anytime, you know, down here, I plant it in November. Okay. But what you really kind of want to do with garlic is maybe get it planted before it gets so cold so that you got some top growth. And the top growth is very very resilient to cold weather. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to hurt it, but you want to get some roots established before it gets too cold. And okay. then it's, it's going to continue to grow underground and continue to establish more and more and more, but it's just going to sit there. It doesn't bulb up until spring or even late spring before it really starts forming that big, that big uh, bulb. But the establishment happens in the fall, ideally uh, for most of the country. Now you could, you could plant it maybe early, early in winter. I don't even, I've never done it then. So I don't know. I, I, and I don't, you know, I live in the Southeast, so I don't know about you, but if it were me up there, I would be planting it before, certainly before the ground freezes and before it got mm -hmm. too cold. So maybe that's still early November for you. Yeah. Oct late October, early November. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, in New York, we've had like snow on Halloween before, but um yeah, I I feel like garlic is an undersung hero of the garden um, from what I've learned, especially from what Brie came on the podcast and she was talking about how garlic is a great deterrent for pests. Yeah. Um, and when I had tasted my friend Melody's garlic, it really was a very different flavor. And the garlic scapes, it's like you want all parts of the plant. Yeah, they're great. And they they uh, they come up on hard neck garlic, but mm -hmm. you want to cut you want to cut the scapes to not detract from the energy you want the energy to go back down in the bulb formation so you cut these scapes which are the basically the flower stock essentially right. and 
Yeah. And you can, you can turn that into, you know, pesto or food or whatever you want. Cause it just tastes like garlic. So we that's love, nice. We love a garlic scape pesto. We love, yes. we love garlic scapes in, uh, with, uh, in the spring in my household. Um, so, okay. It feels like you're suggesting a lot of lettuces. Kale is also beautiful. My mom uses kale ornamentally. I mean, she plants edible kale, but it's such a beautiful plant. It's and bulletproof the, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's bulletproof. It's it deal. I mean, it lives through the snow. We have, you know, her kale and cabbages just snow covered and living their best lives in New York. Um, so in addition to growing other crops, so you gave us some great suggestions. So thank you. And mm -hmm. in your book, you really do have like every single crop, you know, from seed to harvest. <laughs> Ooh, and grow. 